This was the start of the Motor Star Motor British Championship race here at Donington Park. Uh, a few people swapping positions on the run down to Redgate, and the wide 125 line of Bradley Ray swoops in round the outside ahead of Joel Irving. Ollie Simpson, the number 45, gets forced wide by Jordan Weaving. And then a great move by Weaving as he cuts through inside. But then this huge moment for Ollie Simpson, the Red Bull rookie from Australia, crashes out dramatically at the Melbourne hairpin. Meantime, these two absolutely, as Jordan Weaving explains, duking it out, passing and repassing one another wherever they possibly could, running side by side, elbow to elbow, knee to knee, wherever it were possible, wherever it was possible to overtake, they found a spot. Bradley Ray refusing to yield, but not able to get round the outside as they, Jason Uribe make a big effort to plow through the pack, he just got past Brewers when Brewers crashed. And then number 34, Weaving once again outbreaks number 28, Brad Ray. Real drama between these two. What does it matter that they were on different motorcycles? They were just having a good time and the different lines worked absolutely in everybody's favour almost the whole of the time. Bradley Ray had the advantage when Joe Irving, the clear leader, crashed out at the Melbourne Loop. A drastic moment for the red line KTM, and that left Bradley Ray clear to take victory ahead of Jordan Weaving, who increases his lead in the Moto3 Championship. Great ride, though, by the bespectacled Nogi Barkin. A great start by Danny Bucker off pole position. The six foot three inch Essex boy has dominated the Super Stock Thousand Championship in 2014. But everybody clambering all over one another at the back, and that resulted in a trip into the gravel for Michael Robertson and for Johnny Blackshaw. But then drama as they threw themselves down Craner curves. Danny Buchan joined the downhill club at Donington Park, and that was the first non-finish for the championship leader. Jason O'Halloran, his nearest championship challenger, had the advantage at the front then for Honda Racing, followed by Adam Jenkinson and Joy Burns. And that was the front as they kicked up the dirt left by Dom Rush's crash. It was Lee Bob Jackson who began to break through on the build base BMW and challenged the front three. But O'Halloran rolled immaculately. He never gave anyone an opening to try and get through. Jenkinson stuck to him like glue. Uh, down went Dominic, Dominic Rush, a uh, shame for the uh, number 17 GNS racing power stack. Lee Jackson made a terrific move on Joel Burns. Burns couldn't respond at that point. But then Jackson ran way wide at Goddard, and that gave Joel Burns the chance to respond. Lee Jackson straight back through to third base, but this time, Joel had his retaliation lined up, and the big Geordie lad simply swept round the outside through Schwartz curve. Brilliant move. And then, a disaster as we surge down Craner curves. Dave Johnson got sandwiched between two rivals and went down. The red flag was out of Halloran won. 14 laps ahead of the Pirelli National Superstock 600cc championship runners here at Donington Park on a perfect, uh, cool, breezy but sunny morning. As uh, the, mark, the guys fighting for the championship make the best of starts, but uh, there's an enormous hit in the middle of the back of the pack, uh, right off the start, coming out of Redgate, and that brings out the safety car. As they restart, it's, they launch themselves down towards Redgate. Uh, Andy Reid just holding off Kyle Ride. But just behind them, the pole sitter Malachi Mitchell Thomas on the silicone engineering. Kawasaki takes advantage of their scrapping brilliantly. Firstly, to surge inside Kyle Ride. And then at the bottom of the hill, he just clicks it round the outside of Andy Reid and produces an almost Andy Reid like move on Reid himself. So Mitchell Thomas, the 18-year-old from Bolton, led the way until Nicky Anderson led the way to the front on the B-Wiser Kawasaki. Got the better of the two championship challengers until Andy Reid broke free and left these two to dice like this for second place. Andy Reid then led the way. Malachi Thomas, uh, Malachi Mitchell Thomas, unlucky to fall from the Silicon Engineering Kawasaki after hanging on to that fourth place. Andy Reid led the way, Kyle Wright looked to have second place sealed until this move on the final lap by number 47, Nicky Anderson, the green B Wiser Kawasaki got the better of the yellow Yamaha, Andy Reid won the race, 
Nicky Anderson took a vital second place. Kyle Wright found that he's got a lot of pressure with two races to go from this man, Andy Reid. A terrible start as he was lamenting there by Scott Pitcher's pole position absolutely evaporated as Freddie Pett charged to the front and he immediately stamped his authority on the race but a lot of opposition from Phil Atkinson the South African uh, both of them relative veterans of this seri series uh, did his utmost to hang on and indeed briefly managed to snatch the lead from the tall Kings Lynn lad Freddie Pett though took straight back inside at the old hairpin and reclaimed the advantage. The battles behind involved uh, Sam Cox, number 31, uh, just losing out there to Scott Pitchers as they battled their way around the Melbourne loop. Meanwhile, Phil Atkinson broke the lap record and closed the gap, and with those long shadows frightening the life out of Freddie Pett, thinking he was getting caught, he had to respond. Meanwhile, Tom Kahn made a move on Sam Cox as they dropped down to the Melbourne hairpin. That worked nicely for the Lancashireman. And the reigning uh, 125 and GP and Triumph Young Guns champion was there now in, into fourth place. But uh, Sam Cox wasn't giving up, and the, the hack, except that the Hackney uh, sports teacher did bang himself about a bit going through the essence. But for Freddie Pett, well, he was just riding so sweetly. He's dominated at Cadwell Park. He's dominated here at Donington Park. Four races in succession. What a platform for him to clinch the last of the TriStar RMG Triple Challenges here in the British Superbike Series. Well done, Freddie. Well, from pole position, the Virtual Boys really set about winning this one. They've had a fantastic weekend, two flawless wins. Hegarty and Lovelock, though, the green and orange and the yellow and purple outfit is where the battle for the British Eastern Airways Championship lay, and they really got stuck in. It was almost, I won't say uh, insignificant, because it was a stunning win, but these guys didn't figure in the points, but these did. Behind them, though, Pekka Pavarinto on the number 144 outfit Closed down Lovelock, BMW was fighting BMW with Andy Peach closing behind. Eventually, Pavarenta, after several dummy moves, made it stick on the left-hand side heading down to Redgate. Lovelock almost appeared to slow. My co-commentator James Whitton said it looks as though he might have something wrong. And within seconds, he'd retired the hammers in the air and he was off the track. So, that was a perfect spot by Mr. Whitton. Lovelock was out of it. Pavarenta was on the podium. And what a result for the flying fin. Hasn't been here to Donington since 2008. Hegarty got second, picked up 25 points maximum and stretched his gap, gap to 45 points. Virtuals, though, <laughs>